three, two, one, zero, zero, and lift off. All right, welcome back, guys. <clears throat> so, on today's video, yes, I'm shooting it right after the other two, well, there's three, three, yes. But thank you guys again for being patient while I am in the middle of having a baby. <laughs> so on today's video, we are doing more specialized tools, more specialized like hand tools, I guess. Um, these are two um, drawers in my toolbox. Um, yeah, two drawers. Um, so I think I'm gonna start with these four tools right here. So these were like super cheap. I bought them at Harbor Freight for like less than five bucks. But they've come in so much handy. So these tools are panel or panel popper tools. That one's a little curved. So not only do I use this side to pop panels up, um, pry them up, to kind of wedge in there to pop them up. The other side I kind of do that with, but the other side I use more for scraping stuff. So when I scrape stuff, I sometimes use uh, a um, utility knife. But sometimes I'm like scraping something off or something like that that's like glue or something and it's on something that I don't want to mark, you know? These are plastic. These things, amazing. Not only for popping panels off of cars, but for scraping stuff off of stuff. That's why this one's kind of dirty. Tools tend to get dirty. Um, so... But yes, wholeheartedly get those. Even if you don't plan on popping panels off your car, get them. Get some kind of plastic scraper to scrape things off. Kind of staying in that same category. You have like another another little panel, panel little popper right here. I think this was like the first one I got. Like super cheap, it was like a dollar. Um... But staying in that category, we'll work on this thing. So this thing is a scraper. Um, it doesn't have a blade in it. Um, mainly because I, the old blade got kind of old. But it is for utility blades. And you just pop that on there. You can scrape it like this, you know, over something. You can scrape it like this if you want to get, like, fine details and stuff like that. Um, I really like this thing. When it comes to scraping stuff. Um, this thing was only like. Two bucks at Harbor Freight. Um, and when I've needed it. It's come in huge amounts of handy. So definitely get one. Just for scraping stuff. That is a must. And kind of in that category. Well I have these. Um, breakable knives. Um, I have. Blue one and a red one. Um. They're made by, like, two different brands. They both do the same exact thing. Um, you know, you can lock it right here. And then once you're, once this knife gets, like, dull or whatever, you can just take a pair of pliers and, boop, pop it off. As you can see, it has little serrated edges on there all the way down. That's where you can pop it off of. Um, these things, a must. Um... I haven't used them a lot, but like when I'm cutting like cardboard or foam or something like that, I use these bad boys. Kind of staying in that same category, I have these. I have three of these bad boys. I have one at my workbench, um, and then I have two in my toolbox so i usually leave one in there um in my toolbox 
Um, and then I have one to throw in a bag, like a work bag, for when I'm going out doing something, you know, outside of the garage. It's always nice to have these things. I think I got these three packs for like 10 bucks on sale um, during Christmas time. And then here recently I bought more blades for like five bucks. Comes like 50 blades. It's gonna be a while before. I totally broke that thing open. I'll worry about that after this video. Um, yeah, those blades cost me like five bucks. So definitely utility knives, especially nice utility knives. They are a must. You don't have to like, I had, a, I have one somewhere right here. I have no idea where it is. But I have like a little cheaper utility knife um, and it does just fine. But I really, personally, I really like these knives. Um, doesn't have to be cobalt, but definitely get, like, a nice utility knife. These are, like, all metal. I love these things. So, going on, we have lighters. So, these are just extra ones. Um, sometimes I have to light something. Sometimes I have to melt some uh, heat shrink tubing. I just keep lighters in here just because they don't really have a, a home. But if you're really working on stuff or really doing stuff or anything around the house, I always just keep a lighter or two on handy. Doesn't have to be Bic. These are Bic's. Doesn't have to be Bic's. Could be like the cheaper ones. Could be like the longer one. I think I have one actually somewhere. Hold on. Not that dry. No, no. I have one somewhere around here. I will find it. The second I'm done recording this video, I bet. But yeah, just get a couple different kinds of lighters. They're not that expensive. You can pick them up here and there. Pretty much what I did. Um, yeah, always have a couple different lighters. Um, moving on, I have this bad boy. This was given to me. Um, and it's just Allen keys. Um, has four on this side and three on this side. Um, this is usually the one I throw in, again, a go bag and just run with the thing um, when I'm going out and stuff like that. It's done me pretty well so far. So no complaints there. So this one is definitely a specialty tool. Um, and this is a threader. This isn't an expensive threader either. I've definitely seen a lot bigger kits and I plan to get a bigger kit eventually. But for right now, this is, it's gonna work. This only cost me like five bucks at Walmart. I mean, I just wanted to get something kind of cheap to kind of see what they are and what they kind of do before I go out and spend a lot of money on like a nice one and then ruin it, you know? So this is like the little tool thing. And then I have like five of these bits. So like this one's like double sided. Not all of them are double sided. But like we got like a small bit, we got like a really large bit, and just kind of three other bits in between. This is something that is like small enough I can definitely keep in the specialty drawer. Um, but something that I plan on getting more of in the future. Um, a little bit nicer one once I learn how to use these and, um, where I can use them, how I can use them, what's, like, the benefit for me on using them. But for right now, I only have, like, five of them, so they can fit in the specialty drawer. Um, this thing right here was one of the tools that I had to buy for my Mustang. So this is a, um, what is it, fuel filter? um tool and basically like the fuel filter pops into hoses and i actually had to use this tool to go around it go into the hose to pop the fuel filter off both ways um you don't have to buy it i bought it space uh just because i was changing my fuel filter this thing only cost me like five bucks um so i mean it did the job like i mean i've only had to use it once but I have it for when I have to use it again. Um, moving on. I do have a couple different kinds of these. 
Um, but in the specialty drawer, I only have one. This is a fuse puller. Um, basically just to pull fuses out of your car. Um, this part grabs a hold of it and then you like kind of squish down, pull it out. Um, this is like the cheaper kind that comes in like every thing of fuse that, uh, fuses that you buy. Just so I know where one exact one is. I also have this cheaper knife in here. Um, this is like five buck knife. Um, I mostly have it just because it is so rated. Um, and I can really like mar something before I start cutting it with like a utility knife or something like that. Um, basically why I have this in there. I don't really use it that often. That's why it's in the specialty drawer. This thing, um, is a multi-tool and it comes with a little case. So this is definitely one of the tools I definitely throw in a go bag when I'm going somewhere. Um, just because it has a couple different tools built into it. it. Has like some pliers and some like little screwdrivers and like like a knife or two in here. Um, and like a file and everything. Um, just because there's an occasion where like I pack a lot of stuff I forget like one or two tools and this thing usually does a pretty good job about being the tool that I need at that exact moment. So I mean I really can't complain about it. Um, it's exactly what it's used for. Multi-tool has multi-tools inside of it. This next tool is definitely a specialty tool. Um, I've seen a lot more expensive ones, but this one for what I've needed it for, um, it's worked just fine. Um, oh shit. Sorry, I figured out that I could unscrew it. So I wanted to see what the inside of it looked like. I'm a very curious mind. Um, and I get distracted real easy, hence distracted mind, YouTube. Oh god, this thing is like being a pain to get back together. Hold on. Oh god. Hold on guys, I kind of have to use some force on this bad boy. Oh, this thing got screwed in different. Oh, yeah, no. I was just screwing it in wrong. Make sure this thing still works. Oh yeah. So this is a, um, I've always called them like a hole punch. Um, uh, I can't remember what other people call it, but basically this thing, so when you're drilling metal, um, this really just makes a little mark on the metal. Like you push it down and this is like spring activated. You can see it kind of move a little bit. Hold on. Um, this thing is really spring activated. I'm trying to find something I can do this with. I have a bracket here, but um, you push it in and you'll see it like kind of go in. It takes a lot of force to push in. But you hear that it kind of, so this thing has a spring in it that um, when you push it down it, I don't know how you explain it, but when you're pushing this part into the spring, um, how, how kind of I understand it is that this thing will miss the spring, but then another spring will catch it and like it'll push it forward real fast. Um, so this just makes little tiny indents on stuff. I don't know if you guys can see this. Oh, you can. That's a little indent made from this thing. And that just makes it a little bit easier to get it lined up with the drill and have like a little bit of a hole to actually start drilling with. Instead of just when you're, especially when you're doing metal, start drilling and it just, the bit just bouncing around. That's why this thing is in the specialty tool drawer. So that was one complete drawer. We'll move on to this next drawer. This next drawer has some specialty tools or tools that kind of don't have their own home. Um, 
but they definitely need to be on this list. Um, so I have one of these in my car, but I also have one in my toolbox and it is a tire pressure gauge. Um, if you work on cars, this thing is like a must. Tells you the PSI of the tires. You can empty some uh, air out of it if it's a little too high. Um, you can also, this is where you put it into the valve and it tells you how much it is. Um, especially when you're working on cars and stuff like that, or if you do work on cars, this thing is a must. Um, moving on from that, this right here. Um, this came from O'Reilly's. Wasn't that much. Um, but this is a spark plug gauge. Um, again, this is definitely something you need if you're working on your car. Oh, hold on. It says spark plug gap tool. Spark plug gap tool, apparently. Um, yeah. It just tells you, like, like my Mustang, I think, is... You know, now I'm reading this. I cannot tell you what size my I think my Mustang is. Um, but yeah, you basically slide it in on this little thin edge right here. And it goes all the way to, like, an actual thick edge right there. Um, and it has numbers on here. So you can kind of see what it is if you have a specific car or whatever. Um, and you just need to look it up and it'll tell you, like, what it needs to be. And you just slide in right here. Just kind of, kind of guesstimate where it is. Um, this thing, I've never used it. But I thought it was, like, super cool. And uh, I'm pretty sure this thing is, like, kind of old. Um, this is, like, a counter. Um, every time you push this. Hold on, let's see if we can get this. Every time we push this. It goes up by one. I've never had to use this thing. And then once you want to reset it or whatever, um, you go like that. All the way up to, oh, this thing has been upside down for you guys, my bad, to 99. Oh, I messed up. Hold on. There you go. And you go back to zero. I've never had to use this thing, but this thing is like super cool. Um, so yeah, it earns a spot in the specialty tool drawer. There we go. Now these things were something that I found and I've seen them, but like I've specifically never wanted to own them. And it is screwdrivers, but to get nuts off. And then on this side, you could throw in uh quarter inch driver and actually drive these things off or on. I thought these were like super cool. Um, like this one is a five sixteenths. I have five of them. And um, this is a three eighths. This bad boy is a quarter inch. This one is a seven sixteenths. And this one is a 3 sixteenths. I don't know. I thought they were really cool. I've never had to use them since I've gotten them. Ah, I'm getting stuck on some. Hold on. Ah. Um, but, like, they're really cool. And when I need them, I guarantee you these are, like, going to come in handy. Um, I mean, up till now, until I got these... Um, that I ended up finding, um, I mean, I've never wanted these or anything, but I think they're really cool. Have yet to use them. Hope I use them soon. Um, but yeah, now moving on to the last two things. So these are Allen keys. I bought these ones at like Harbor Freight. Um, this is the short and long metric. Um, I think with this one and the standard, we're like... 10 bucks. Um, this one goes all the way from 0.27 being the smallest, going all the way up to 8 being the biggest. 
um, in a toolbox of any kind, Allen keys are like a must. Like if I were to start a toolbox, which I mean, actually that's a really good idea. Starting a toolbox, like a starter toolbox. Maybe we could do a video of that. Side note. Um, I would definitely put these in here. So how I tell them apart is A, because of how they're labeled, and B, one's gray and then one's red. Um, but yeah, this one goes from 0 0.05 being the smallest all the way up to 5 sixteenths being the biggest. Um, these are complete sets. Um, I did have one complete set, but I think it was just metric. Um, so, oh, so I, uh, I just kind of got these and that one kind of started living in the extra tool, um, tote. But yeah, these are like a must. Definitely. These things are cheap buying as is like, as like a complete set. Um, so there's really no need of not buying a complete set of these. Um, but yeah, definitely buy complete sets of these, um, and buy both of them at the same exact time. Um, out of everything of what I have in the specialty drawer, um, things that I would take away from this would definitely be for any, whatever you do is definitely have one utility knife. That is very much a must. Um... I would say definitely one of these breakaway um, knives. A plastic scraper is an absolute must. At least one lighter. I mean, what could go wrong? You can light candles with this thing. This thing has so many uses. And then definitely Allen keys. Um, yeah, that thing is like a must. Um, the other tools that I kind of laid out were like definitely specialty for me and what I've needed or have used. But if you're like starting out and you kind of are looking for what you want, definitely those three things, um, will save your life. Like no matter what you're doing, it will definitely save your life. Um, even if you have like a small toolbox that you just have a couple tools in, definitely have these three things that I just showed you. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Um, who, who, who are we doing something nice for today? Huh? Um, you know what? I'll let you guys decide. Do something nice for someone in your life. Um, you know what? You know what? Make it someone that you see every day. Do something nice for someone that you see every day. There you go. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, do something nice for someone.